Earlier this year, we saw Solid State Logic launch their latest control surface, the UF8. This featured eight motorized touch sensitive faders, nine rotary encoders, LCD displays, and of course the dedicated 360 software app to customize it to your needs. And although the UF8 can control certain plugins, wouldn't it be killer to have something physical that represented your favorite channel strip? Kind of like this? Boop. Ask and you shall receive, my friends. Introducing the UC1, a dedicated knob per function plug and control surface for SSL's world renowned channel strip and bus compressor 2, which have been recently updated to sound indistinguishable from their hardware counterparts. So jumping right into it, if you've worked on an SSL desk before, if you've used any of their hardware, any of their plugins, the layout of the UC1 should look pretty familiar. In the upper left, we have our high and low pass filters. Just below that, SSL's trademark EQ section, which is perfect for surgical work, as well as adding a little vibe. In the upper right portion of the UC1, we have the compressor, and just below that, the gate expander. Last but not least, front and center, an absolute classic, the SSL bus comp. This latest version of the bus comp expands on its control set by adding ratio, attack, and release options, the ability to add sidechain externally, as well as two and four times oversampling. The black paneling here indicates the input and output metering, as well as the encoders below, which indicate what track you're mixing with the UC1. So that covers the physical controller itself, now let's talk about what the UC1 is controlling. The original SSL channel strip plugin was digitally modeled from the super analog, dynamics, and EQ circuits of the famous 9000 series console. For the new Channel Strip 2 plugin, they've updated it to sound even better than the original, in particular the EQ section, which features SSL's new anti cramping technology. This prevents amplitude and phase wrapping when boosting high frequencies between 15 and 20 kHz. But yes, there's more, there's always more. If you currently are a user of the SSL Channel Strip, version 2 is available to you for a free upgrade. To wrap it all up, the UF8 as well as the UC1 share the Companion 360 plugin mixer to view and control all of your channel strips and bus comps in one place, as well as the ability to save presets. Alright, so what are we doing today? Well, we have the UC1 and the UF8 chained together at the desk here behind me. We are going to be mixing the song Simply Being by the band Delinian. Brian Riley, our engineer, is going to walk us through how he mixed the whole thing exclusively using the UF8, the UC1, all the Companion plugins, but first, Let's have a listen to the raw and then the mixed version and then we'll jump into it. You're so unsure and tired of faking everything. But I can't tell if you've been here for anything. So don't be alone if you don't have to. I know you. Hey everyone, Brian Riley here, and today we're at the Vintage King Studios, and we're going to be mixing the song Simply Being by the band Delinian. And we're going to be demonstrating the new SSL UC1, along with the UF8, and their new channel strip and bus compressor plugins. The band tracked this live at their practice space, and then sent us the files here to mix. So I got everything loaded up into Pro Tools, and First thing I did was put the version 2 channel strip plugin on every single channel. And then typically when I start a rock track like this, I like to start with the drums. So let me walk you through what I did in the mix process. So when I started with the kick drum, first thing I did was add a bunch of high frequency to it. And then I took out just a little bit of the attack at about 3K after boosting a bunch of high frequency. And then I scooped a little bit of the low mid frequency to take the boxiness away. And then I added some sub to make it thumpy. So another great feature with the Channel Strip 2 along with the UC1 is the ability to engage either the gate or the expander. And in this example, I'm using the expander to just mildly reduce some of the bleed that's coming into the kick-in mic. So from the snare drum and the hi-hats. I 
On the overall drum kit, in parallel, I'm actually using the X Saturator by SSL. And I have the mix all the way up, and I have the drive pretty cranked. And this is actually just helping to add overall punch and attack to the drum kit, um, mostly to the kick and the snare drum. And then also, on Ascendant Return from the entire kit, I'm using the Flex Burr just to add some natural ambience of room tone into the drum kit. So along with the kick in mic, he also sent me a kick out microphone. And then I added just a trigger sample just to add a little more attack overall. So on the kick sample, I'm adding just uh, some top end just to make that poke a little bit more. I'm also adding some low frequency just to enhance that sub yet again. Um, using a little bit of the filters just to clean up some of the subby low end as well as the pokiness on the top. And then on this example, I'm also using the SSL compressor. And then for the kick out mic, uh, basically just removing a tiny bit of the low mid. I'm also boosting some more of that sub frequency and then using the compressor. So moving on to the snare top microphone. Uh, for this example, I'm using a bunch of EQ at around seven and a half K. And that's just to get that attack of the snare drum. I'm using quite a bit of compression. And you can notice on this example and some of the other ones, it's a great feature um, Right on the UC1, you have the ability to adjust the input and the output gain. So since uh, an SSL compressor, when you engage it, it's actually automatically adding gain to the signal, uh, I'm able to level match that just with the quick turn of a knob right here. So then in addition to their microphones, I did add one sample in there uh, just to get more crack and definition overall to the snare drum. And again, for this, I am using quite a bit of top end just to make sure that pokes through. But then I'm also dialing that back on the low pass filter quite a bit. And for, for this example, I'm actually using an insane amount of compression just because I don't really want the transient to poke through. I just want it to enhance the overall sound of the snare drum. And then as you can tell also on here, I'm reducing it about 12 dB of gain. Next thing in the kit are the toms. Uh, he's doing a lot of really cool tom fills in this song. So I want to make sure that those were all present and heard throughout the mix. So I'm actually to reduce some of the bleed throughout just like the, the verse and everything, really when he's not playing the toms. In this example, I'm using the gate and the range is set all the way down. So it's really only opening up when he's really focused on the toms. For the rack tom, I'm adding a little bit of high frequency just to make that attack come through. And then I'm reducing some of the low mids just to take out some of the natural boxiness that's in there. And then I'm also adding a tiny bit of sub frequency on the floor tom, I'm actually doing quite a bit of filtering, as you can see on the top. I am adding, again, some more top uh, frequency around 7.5K, just to make that poke through, and a little bit of sub. So as you can hear, it's kind of when he, when he hits the crash really hard, the floor tom is also opening up from time to time. So when you hear the drums in isolation, it sounds like there's this thing coming in and out and it sounds a little weird, but when the whole track is playing, it actually helps to find that cymbal crash on the right side.
one thing with with a rock track like this is that you really don't want the cymbals to be overbearing. They just need to fill up that frequency and to hear the definition of the crashes and when he's really riding on the crash. So in this example, for both the overhead left and the right, I'm adding, again, a, a lot of top, top end, 10 and a half at, at seven and a half. But then I'm using the low pass filter at around 8K to kind of attenuate a little bit of what I'm actually boosting so extreme. And I'm also adding uh, quite a bit at 130. And that's just to kind of beef up the, the snare drum that's, that's in the overhead tracks. On both of these examples, I'm also using quite a bit of compression just because I want the cymbals and the snare to not poke out of these tracks, but just be one cohesive thing. And the final mic on the kit is the room track, which is just a mono room set in the middle. And this one was, was pretty boxy and pretty dark when it came to me. Um, so I didn't really want too much of that boxiness in general. I wanted it to be more of a excitement of the room overall. So to kind of hear more of the air in the room rather than something in particular. So I'm actually at 22K on this EQ, boosting almost 16 dB, and that's getting that air in there. And then I'm attenuating around uh, 800, eight and a half dB to take all that boxiness of the room out. I'm boosting seven and a half dB at 67, because I do want some of the, the low subbiness of the room to, to poke through. But then I'm also filtering pretty hard. So everything that I'm, I'm boosting up extremely like that, um, my low pass filter is set to 6K and then my high pass filter is set to 60 to tame the, the highs and the lows. And then also in this example, I am using the ratios at six to one. And so quite a bit of compression just to smash the whole room together. And then again, you can notice that I'm attenuating the output about 10 dB. That's all the treatment that I did to the drums. So let me give you an example of what this exact balance sounds like before any of the SSL processing and the samples and the saturator and the reverb. And then I'll kick everything back on to hear the comparison. Next up is the bass. In this song, there is a fuzz bass, there is an octave kind of synth bass, and there's also a clean bass in the verse. So the first bass that kicks in is the fuzz. And in the original track, there actually wasn't a lot of low frequency in there, but there was a, a really nice bite and growl overall to the bass. So using the high pass filter, I tamed down, rolled down to about 6K, just to take some of that like ultra harshness off the top. And then I did add the shelf overall, added about 60 dB, but brought it all the way down to 1.5. And that's just to make that mid-range growl poke through overall. And then I added another six and a half dB at 1K. And then I'm also using a bit of compression on this example. So this is the fuzz bass by itself. So to add 
sub frequency in there, what I did is I duplicated the track and then I used a pretty extreme example of EQ on here to take away basically all of the top frequency. So negative 20 at 1.5, the high pass filter is all the way up. I'm reducing all of the high mids. I'm taking out some of the low mids and then I'm boosting uh, eight and a half dB at 40 Hertz. And then I'm also compressing this example. And this is the sub bass by itself. And then this is both of them together. When the verse initially starts, the fuzz bass and the clean bass all drop out, but there is this kind of synth octave pulsing bass that comes in. I'm actually adding 16 and a half dB at 40 on this example to really enhance the sub frequency, but it also has this really nice kind of gritty attack to it. So I'm adding 12 and a half dB at seven and a half, 10 dB at 2.8. And then I'm also compressing this quite a bit. So this is what this sounds like in the verse. Where that synth bass leaves off, now the actual clean bass picks up. And on this example, it was, it was pretty dark again when it came to me. So I'm adding a quite a bit again of seven and a half, adding about 13 and a half dB of that on the top shelf to make that cut through. But then I'm dialing back just a tiny bit of the high pass filter to make up for a little bit of that. But I am adding about 10 dB at 3.7 to also make that pop through. And then I'm taking away some of six, 600, just to take out some of the boxiness of it. And this is also being compressed quite a bit, just to keep it pretty solid when it kicks in. This is the mixed drums with the mixed bass about halfway through the verse into the chorus. Next up are all the electric guitars on the track. So there was uh, quite a bit of them that came in. Most of the guitars on this track were recorded with a dynamic mic as well as a ribbon microphone. So before I got mixing, I actually just created an aux, a mono aux, combined the two, and then just made mono tracks. For most of these examples, I'm adding, again, just like most of the other parts of the song, uh, quite a bit of high frequency. So 7.5K, adding about 8.5 to the first electric that comes in. And then around 3.5K, boosting that, about 4 dB. And then I'm taking out just a little bit of those sub-frequencies because I don't want the guitars to end up being muddy. And I'm also using the compressor on these examples as well. So this is the first guitar that comes in on the intro. So now let me play it for you and I'm going to take in and out the EQ and the compressor. And a great thing about the UC1 is that I can do both of them at the same time instantly. So I can AB back and forth the changes that, that I did and then what the raw source is.
When the song starts, there's the solo guitar that's panned hard left. And then when coming into the first chorus, it's when the secondary guitar comes in, which is now panned hard right. So it might look like a lot of these EQ curves, you know, or just these moves are, are very over the top, but it's actually one testament to SSL consoles and along with the Channel Strip 2 and the UC1 is that when you boost high end on an SSL EQ dramatically like this, it's actually still remains silky and it doesn't really get harsh. It's not attacking you in your face, but it really, it, you know, it opens up the air and it just makes everything more present and forward in a mix. So this is what it sounds like when both of the guitars kick in. So I have all the individual tracks going into a stereo bus, which is called the electric bus. On that, I have inserted the brand new Bus Compressor 2 plugin. And I was able to, on the UC1, dial in this really tight, nice sound for the electric guitars. So nothing really jumps out at you. They all sound like they're really nice and compacted together. So I'm using just a simple two to one ratio, uh, the slowest attack time, the quickest release time and it's compressing probably at its at its top uh, maybe 4 dB or so and then I'm using the makeup gain just a little bit of that to push them forward in the track so this is what it sounds like with the bus compressor on there and then without the bus compressor That's all the treatment for the guitars. So let's hear how they blend with our drums and our bass. First set of vocals that come into the song are the chorus vocals, which are doubled and they're panned hard left and hard right. So on the channel strip two, kind of the same treatment as before, as I am adding quite a bit of high frequency just to make them cut through the rest of the track. And then I'm adding just a little bit of compression and there's no other EQ happening. So all of the vocals are being sent to a parallel center return reverb here, which again is our SSL flex verb, which sounds absolutely wonderful. And on this example, it's set to a medium plate. And this is just adding really nice space and atmosphere around the vocal. Speaking twice and tongue again. Your mind seems unrelenting. When the lead vocal comes into the verse, it stops being that wide left and right spread, and it just becomes a mono vocal in the center of the mix. And it's relatively the exact same processing, just adding a lot of high frequency. On the verse example though, in particular, I'm actually rolling off a lot of the low from the voice. And then also within the verse vocals, um, I'm using the UF8 to do automation rides. So at the beginning of the lines, he's actually attacking and it's really full voice. And then towards the end of the lines, he starts to get more chest voice and softer. So I'm using the UF8 
to automate up the ends of his phrases. Mine seems unrelenting. You're so unsure and tired of faking everything. But I can't tell if you've been here for anything. The last bit of treatment that's happening on the overall vocal bus is again the bus compressor 2. And for this example, I'm using the ratio at 4 to 1. It's the slowest attack, so it's set to 30. The release is set to auto, so it's kind of reacting more in tempo with what he's singing to. And it's compressing overall probably at its loudest, maybe like 5 or 6 dB. And that's really just to keep all the vocals, all the doubles, the, the fact that it goes from a stereo to a mono, just as one consistent vocal throughout the song. And this is what it sounds like with and without the bus compressor on the vocals. <laughs> Simple B. So the last couple things that are happening here, just to explain some of the routing of what's going on. So all of the instruments, so the you know basically everything except for the vocals, are being sent into what's called the music bus. And on the music bus, I have the bus compressor two, and this is set two to one, slowest attack, auto release. Uh, the threshold is all the way up, so really this isn't triggering or doing too much. It's only mildly compressing at certain points, and that just basically keeps like the drums and the guitars and the bass and everything, keeps anything from really poking out too much. So the vocals are also being sent to a separate mix bus, and then this, the attack, is slightly quicker than what's on the music bus, uh, which is set to 10 and the release is auto, so it's still working in time with the song, and then this is also a two to one ratio. The threshold, same with the music bus, is all the way up, so this is only capturing very, very mild peaks that happen possibly throughout the song. So then both the music bus and the vocal bus get summed into what I call the mix bus, and that has another bus compressor 2 on there. And this one is actually set with a 4 to 1 ratio. And it has the attack set to 10, the release set to auto. And this one, the threshold is pulled down. And this is to glue everything in the mix together. If I had the choice or the option to work on a mixing console on a day-to-day -day basis, my first choice typically would always be an SSL. And that's just, it's flexibility with the EQs to be able to carve stuff as well as to be able to add a um, good amount of bass, good amount of presence, and it never becomes too harsh or digital sounding. I'm also a huge fan of the compressor that's built in as well as the gates to help clean up and the expanders. It's just an absolute wonderful console to work on. So having a UF8 and a UC1 in front of me and I can just have a channel strip on every single channel. I can easily bounce back and forth. It was very, very similar to working on an SSL console. I didn't feel restricted. I didn't feel like I was working in the box. Um, I could move insanely fast to where I could adjust multiple things at a time. I could turn on and off the EQs as well as the compressor. Uh, having the fader banks, I was able to do multiple channels of automation. So when I'm working in my home studio these days, I'm typically just using a trackpad and my keyboard and an array of, of outboard gear in a hybrid rig. But to switch to this and to have the experience of feeling like mixing on an SSL was perfectly seamless, very, very easy to get used to. All right, so now that we've gone through all the processing on the mix, uh, let's bounce back and forth between the original rough mix and our mix with all the SSL processing on it.
you have it friends, Solid State Logic's UC1 and UF8 control surfaces as well as their latest channel strip and bus compressor 2 plugins. If you have any questions about the UC1 or the UF8, anything at all from SSL, hit up your audio consultant, visit us at vintageking.com, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. I can't come.